I'm the Disc Golf Guy and this is my video blog. We're here in Grand Rapids, Michigan for the Pro Masters Divisional Doubles. This is Modified Alternate Shot. Half the team will throw from the evens, the other half the team will throw from the odd tees. Dave Felberg and Johnny McCray have a big lead, but let's see if they can be hunted down. Coverage brought to you this weekend by Latitude 64 and the Professional Disc Golf Association. And welcome back everyone to the final nine holes here at the divisional doubles of the 2017 PDGA Pro Master World Championships. Johnny McCray and Dave Felberg seem to have things in control here. Shooting very hot on the front nine. I believe they went 10 down on the, fr on the first nine holes uh, to extend the lead they already had going into it. And we're here on hole number two, which is one of the easier must-get holes on this course. 260 feet. Gentle hyzer. Straight shot. Shasta to Chris for 30. And he will convert for the team. Mark Nelson also converts. We're looking to make this a star frame to get things started on the final nine holes of the event. Felberg's going to have to stretch out to his right. But very easy. That's three birdies in three attempts. And at 360 feet, we'll watch Dave Felberg go out and around. He did it during the best shot round, however had mm, a lot more success that round. There is a OB road off to the right side, so players have to think about that, just assuming they're not going to turn it over. We have Shasta Chris, he'll be throwing all the odd numbered holes, as is Mark here, and Mark might have gotten saved. He was definitely tracking toward the road. And the hot putter from the front nine, Doug. We'll see uh, how he can contribute here on the back. Oh, and a solid run. This is DJ for birdie. This putter struggled a little bit early on, and right now this is really just a race for second place. Oh, Dave Felberg. Giving the basket the evil eye, making sure that it caught and brought it in. And we've got cleanup on aisle three. This hole fits right into DJ Ellis's wheelhouse. He can give it as much power as he wants off on that left hand side. You'd really rather be left than right here. And Johnny puts a crush on this up into that blue sky with the blue disc. Made it a little hard for me to track. I finally see it coming in center fairway. Only because it hits the tree and drops down. And Doug, who's kept him low and straight throughout the round. Puts his partner in great position. Mark's going to be first to throw. And somehow misses the tree. Great shot by Mark. You can hear the wind, which has been sporadic throughout the day as Felberg puts them into easy look from there. Shasta throwing it out. Giving a chance for DJ a to unfortunately not convert on the putt. He's struggled a little bit here today with the putting. Johnny McCray certainly hasn't. This is going to be considered a par three, which is definitely one of the most challenging par threes on the course. And I'll be uh, <laughs> not quite as steady, but still in as Doug. He knows he got away with one there a little bit low. That's close. Hole four did not do these guys any favor today. They played it one over par. And Mark 
is up throwing. I was not quite in position and ready for Dave Felberg, so I apologize. I believe it was Dave who had thrown first. He put himself up there. This is really just a hyzer, big hyzer dump for all of these players. I know the course had undergone some changes and redesigns. I'm not quite convinced this is the 455 that it was listed at. I think it played a little bit long. If it is 455, it definitely plays much longer. I'd give it closer probably to 555. However, just went off the scorecards and T signs. It's going to be a long jump putt. And Mark, he's been able to rely on his buddy, Doug. Doug's done a lot of hard work getting it done out there. That is just considered a par, which I think a lot of people would consider a birdie. Those guys tap in. Move on to the par four, hole number six. mentioned in the modified best shot round the signature tree that is just short of the pin was cut down I believe Felberg had said within 48 hours of these guys playing it so it had been out there for possibly hundreds of years and unfortunately it was cut down just before the event as we got closer to it we could see it had been struck by lightning was DJ Puts a drive out there for Shasta. They've got a lot of room here. 680 feet. And uh, that's right where the tree would have been. Also allows you to see the basket much better. And a near duplicate shot from Dave's best shot round. It looked like a nearly identical throw. Might have been a little full fault there, Mark. Skip. Yeah. Nice. Nice, Mark. Great skip. DJ's got a chance here. And that looked in the entire way. Unfortunately, just a bit short. Doug takes advantage of Mark's solid shot. Puts him up there for birdie, and McCray and Felberg are going to be back on the birdie train. They've actually gone a few holes without one. Feels a little weird. Tap by Shasta. Felberg's going to play this very wide, a little bit too high and a little bit too wide. It's marked at 325. I think I'd give it a little longer than that if I were to measure it out. Mark faked me out there. I was expecting the big hyzer, and he went with the attempted turnover off the tee. That's going to put him left side. And Shasta also playing the big turnover. Getting the full S curve out of that. Mark and Doug had a little conversation as to how to play this one, and I think just laying it up put next to the basket was the best route. And Felberg had stayed way back near the tee. He had a very long walk. He there it is for DJ. Felberg had to make the very long walk to clean that up. And DJ says, I'm going to get in on this birdie action. So they'll walk away with the birdie, the other two teams with the par. Again, a very tight battle for what is second place at the moment. First place is all locked up. 
get to spoil for you guys, but I, I don't see things changing in the last three or four holes. And yes, this was the hole. I admitted to getting hit right in the leg while changing a battery last round. And it looks like we're struggling off the tee. I'd gotten hit because I forgot there were six people throwing, which is not something we're used to as a recorder. And after the fifth person, I swapped out a battery and they yelled and I took one right to the leg. Thank goodness it wasn't that good of a shot. Shasta with a great shot. Pulling, pulling over. And Felberg with the hmm, step. Uh, <laughs> the ginger step putt. Uh, <laughs> not sure what the exact phrasing is for that. It's definitely a step putt. But it's nice and gentle. It's really light. A pair of pars here on hole eight. Just a few to play. You want to get dinner later? Yeah, I thought that. Okay. That'd be great. <laughs> at 300 feet. Dave Felberg can throw this just about anywhere and it should give McCray some kind of a putt. If you haven't seen some of these players throw before, we hope that you're enjoying it. All coverage brought to you by Latitude 64, Shasta Chris, and partner DJ Ellis. It's Mark Nelson. What a great drive, flirting with the tree branches. And he's gone deep past the basket. Doug's been the putting machine all round. And finds that tree instead. Need a little wider straddle there. And maintaining composure, but certainly frustrated inside is DJ. DJ has had his struggles. Again, great composure throughout the day though. And although you didn't see it, Johnny McRae's putt was just a bit left. Felberg's going to tap in. They're going to take a par. Shasta going to do the same. Final hole coming up. is a very difficult par four and it's all about placement on this initial drive. DJ is going to go out and around the tree. You want to push the left side as much as possible to get close to the water. But you certainly don't want to find it and that was a great shot by DJ. And this is also a great shot. That is perfect. Thanks. And Felberg decides to go around the land portion of the water. <laughs> That's going to put him right next to the basket, no problems. Now you have a water carry here, which is crucial. And Shasta, so smooth, says, eh. All right, DJ. <laughs> no putting required, buddy. <laughs> He's going to put it underneath the pin. That's a walk in birdie and Mark shot is short and left and uh, does not cross the water's edge over there they have to go to this side of the water Doug's worried he might be short and barely finding themselves inbounds there's a pro move right there brings a one meter stick with him so there's never a doubt as to how much relief you take from OB. <laughs> then to add insult to injury, it just flops out on the final hole. Oh, oh, oh. 
Uh, awkward. I was supposed to let you guys come. Yeah. Now Cray taps in for birdie. See Marty Gregoire in the background. Let's see what these guys were thinking throughout the day. Okay, so we're talking. I'm the disc golf guy, and this is my video blog. We're here for the divisional doubles and the superhouse team, Dave Felberg and Johnny McRae. I think anything less than a win would have been disappointing. Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to come out. We expected a lot more teams to show up, but I think Johnny putting us on the list first didn't help out. It might have scared a few people <laughs> away. You guys shot a blazing first round, but most importantly, it looked like you were having some fun out there. Yeah, we were enjoying ourselves. The guys we played with were really nice and had a lot of game. And, you know, this is a great warm-up for the world, being able to play with a little bit of gallery, and it counts as such as the practice round. So. And, Johnny, you'll be back out here, but not for a few days. Uh, what's it like getting the course in uh, at, and practice, just like Dave said? Oh, it was a... It was great. It's, uh, the course looking really good. They put up some OB flags and stuff that I hadn't seen yet, so that was nice. And uh, the course is really looking really good right now, so I'm looking forward to getting out here on Friday. Yeah. All right, Friday. Uh, dare I say, as this is happening before the events start, you two might be squaring off later in the week. I mean, I would say that, that that's probably the, you know, we're looking at it. There's lots of great players here. I don't want to knock anybody. They, they could whip me down, but I feel like in the end, It'll probably be, you know, the break this time. Yeah, well, we'll see the two of you, hopefully. There's going to be plenty of people charging. The Worlds, for the first time ever, is broke off as a separate event. I saw both of you. Year. Yeah, it is, and I saw both of you guys just uh, a few weeks ago playing in the regular, the open division. We'll yeah. say the regular pro. I was going to say the open division. Yeah, I don't uh, know what's what to it? Call what, yeah, exactly. What's it mean <laughs> for you, Johnny, to be competing at both events? Um, I, like I said, this is a monumental year, and uh, this is a setting precedence kind of year. So, with it being the first time separated with the Open and the Masters, so I'm excited about it. I want to go out there and I want to try to do my best. I'm sure Dave does too. And uh, like I said, monumental year. There's going to be records set this year, so hopefully it's uh, good ones. All right. Well, Johnny McRae is going to be attempting to defend his Pro Masters title. But right now, as we start the week, we've got our champions right here. Thanks to Latitude 64 and the rest of the club and the PDGA for bringing in the coverage. I'm the Disc Golf Guy. We wish these guys the best of luck.